My name is Tara Poulton. I am on Manatee Chamber staff. I'm the Vice President of Public Policy and Workforce Partnerships, and I'm thrilled to have you all here with us. Uh, I did want to make, an, um, make a mention that today is National Nonprofit Day. Any nonprofits in the room? Thank you so much for the work you do in this community. We really appreciate you. Well, welcome to our August Headliners Luncheon. After a very successful first week of school, we are so excited to have School Superintendent Cynthia Saunders joining us today. I am sure it is no easy task for her to take hours out of her day um, this early in the school year to be with us today. Now, the Manatee Chamber is proud of our longstanding relationship with the School District of Manatee County. It's a partnership we continue to strengthen through direct student programming, such as Project Teach that we do with our fourth graders in the spring, and the Big Bang Theory that we're getting ready to launch in October, and as well as the business at other business education partnerships. Engaging the business community in our schools, connecting with our future workforce, has been a priority of the Chamber for many, many decades, and we are so grateful that our members get involved, and that our schools so openly welcome the business community in to make a difference for both our students and our teachers. Now, if you could, please silence all those cell phones and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. I would like to recognize our elected officials in the room, uh, school board members, Gina Messenger, Chad Choate, and Reverend James Golden. Thank you for being here. From Manatee County, we have commissioners George Cruz, Carol, did I, Carol Whitmore, is she here yet? I don't think I've seen her. And James Satcher is hoping to be with us today. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much for your service and commitment to making our community such a wonderful place to live, work, and play. I'd now like to recognize our headliner sponsors, the Florida Power and Light, the Mosaic Company, as well as the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manatee. Thank you to our platinum sponsors whose names are now on the screen. Brown and Sons Funeral Homes and Crematory, Carr Riggs and Ingram, IMG Academy, Manatee County Government, Manatee Memorial Hospital, MCR Health and All Care Options, The Mosaic Company, NDC Construction, Pittsburgh Pirates, Bradenton Marauders Baseball, Raymond James Wealth Management, Bruce Body, Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, and South State Bank. Now, just before we allow Pier 22 to serve our lunch, I wanted to share some fun facts with you. Um, you know, the first one you may already know, School District is the largest um, employer in Manatee County, employing 6,000 teachers, staff. Um, it's, it's quite a handful. And, and, they, and they do that with 52,000 students enrolled in our school. I heard yesterday that it's 2,000 more than last year. That's a significant number. We have a total of 64 schools, including both public and charter. Wait, let me just read that one. We have a total of 64 schools, and that includes both public and charter schools. 
So when it comes to transportation, I want to throw some numbers at you. The school district, they manage 103 different bus routes every day, 103. They drive almost 13,000 miles every day on our local roads. If you think about that, that is 2.6 million miles a year, our buses, transporting more than 12,000 students. So a big thank you to our school bus drivers. <laughs> and in those cafeterias, they are serving up 15,000 breakfasts every day, 30,000 lunches. I make one lunch every morning for my, for my eight-year-old, and I'm done after that. 13,000, no, 15,000 breakfasts, 30,000 lunches. That totals 8.5 million a year. Incredible. How's that for food for thought? So with that, Pier 22 is now gonna serve your lunch. Uh, once plates are on the table, Rick Vizio, our chairman of the board and owner of the Educated Franchise, will be back to the podium to formally introduce our speaker. Enjoy lunch. I know everybody's eating, but we have to kind of move on. My name's Rick Bizio. I'm the chair of the chamber, and I have the distinct honor of introducing my friend, Superintendent Cynthia Saunders today. Uh, Ms. Saunders joined the school district in 2013 and was appointed the school superintendent in 2018. During her tenure, the district uh, ranking among the 67 different school districts in the state of Florida has risen significantly. Uh, when she began in 2018, we were 33rd in the state. Today, with your leadership and with the board and with all your team together, we're now 25th in the state, which is the highest we've ever been. At the chamber, we, uh, the relationship with the district, we feel, is, is very important. We, we recognize that the strength of the educational system is a critical component upon which our community either succeeds or falters. Uh, it's a critical piece of our quality of life, and the quality of a school district uh, generally is very high on, on the reasons why a person moves to a place, right? It's why they want to live in a place. We believe that, the, uh, that a high quality, effective, and adequately funded educational system is foundational uh, to individual success, uh, to business growth, and to community vibrancy. After all, the success of our students is directly related to our future success of our local businesses and our economy. So now, just one week into the new school year, <laughs> I am thrilled to have Cynthia with us today. Superintendent Saunders. Has it only been one week? <laughs> yes, it, it's, yes, we're gonna say it's one week. Uh, and I thank you all for taking your time. Uh, it's, it's, of course, a, a topic that's near and dear to me, but that so much interest is uh, founded on our school district and the success of our school district, which we know would not happen without everybody in this room in this community. So I thank you for coming to get an update on where we are and where we're going for the school year. Some of this has already been mentioned, and I appreciate you uh, kind of relaying these facts, but um, I'm not sure that everyone in our community understands how much we've grown specifically in the last 10 years and really who we're serving and the numbers that we're serving. And I'm sure that this PowerPoint will be able to be given out uh, and sent to all the chamber members. So uh, you don't have to take notes. We'll ma make sure that you're able to get, get all the information here. Uh, this was also mentioned. And uh, why is it significant? Well, uh, ju just as uh, Mr. Choate was talking about football, it, it, it is important how we're ranked. It is important if you're number one. It is important that we're showing academic improvement when we're comparing ourselves to the other 67 counties. We do know that people choose to move into an area or remain in an area because of, of the educational system. Because we know if we have a strong educational system, we're gonna have strong communities, strong jobs, 
and strong uh, businesses alike. So it, it does matter. I don't know if everyone was aware, but we did have one of the state finalists for Teacher of the Year this past year. And we've got to give Adela Jackson a kudos. She is a math teacher, fourth grade teacher at one of our Title I schools. It is the first time that we've had a finalist for Teacher of the Year in Manatee County. And we couldn't be more proud of Miss Jackson. And she is still there. Absolutely. Doing amazing work in impacting the lives of many children. In addition to that, in case you didn't know what we have on the horizon this year, lots of exciting things. Uh, our, our newest one, our biggest partnership that we're working on is the partnership with Guy Harvey. And it will be at Anna Maria Elementary School. What better place than to have a partnership that uh, will really bring mar marine life into the in into the educational classrooms. But remember with Guy Harvey, it's not just science, it's also art. Uh, in case you didn't know, and I didn't know this till we began the conversations, but Bell's Department Store, which is in Manatee County, it, it is the headquarters, Manatee County, was the first large retailer that partnered with him to sell his t-shirts and their merchandise. So now years later, they're partnering with us so that we can be one of the first schools to open up an academy and partner with a school district. So we're working on the curriculum. We've, we're ready to roll out the first quarter. And once we have all the aquariums in place, we will be having a ribbon cutting for the community and the media. It's not going to stop at Anna Maria Elementary. We will expand this product into King Middle and also to Manatee High School. So we're really excited about that partnership. Uh, the Community Partnership Schools. We started that endeavor really about five years ago at Manatee Elementary. And we are expanding that to Daughtry Elementary this year. So uh, that is where we have a lot of members in, in the community coming in and supporting the wraparound services that go beyond what's happening day in, day out in, in the K-12 spectrum. Our dual language program, what is that? Well, that's where we begin the, the curriculum where the students in the classroom and they begin in kindergarten are taught half a day in Spanish and half a day in English. So by the time they're out of fifth grade, they will be specifically through that program, they will be bilingual and biliterate. They will be able to read, write, speak the language. And can you imagine coming out of fifth grade having, having that experience? We started that at Daughtry. This year we will now have expanded that to five of our elementary schools. And then we will migrate up into the feeder pattern of the middle schools. But that is at Daughtry, it's at Rogers, it's at Brain River Elementary, Myaka, and Palmetto. So we're really excited about that. Early Bird, this is a great par partnership that we've just uh, also broached with uh, the Sarasota uh, Community Foundation. But this is a program that does a diagnostic on students to determine if they have dyslexia. Not only do, does the program determine if you have it, but it provides the intervention and the support and the training to our teachers so that we can make sure that that's corrected at an early age. The research says that 20% of the students that cannot read on grade level by third grade are dyslexic. You may not be aware, but the state of Florida in our ESC calibration does not have a specific screener for dyslexia. So we're very blessed to partner with a foundation that we're able to establish that. That's at three of our elementary schools with the hopes that we will expand this to all of ours within three years. So right now we have that at Blackburn, at Bashaw, and at Prine. So it'll be interesting to see what the data and the research shows from that. Our Gar Garner Holt animatronics, how many of you in the room have been to Disney and have been in the Hall of Presidents? 
Most of us. Okay, it's a little old in there now. I know, I, it's kind of dated. But the animatronics there is what we're talking about Garner Holt. That is the product and the company that did all of the special effects and the robotics for that program. That is now going to be in two of our middle schools this year, Sug and Nolan. So we are super excited about the programs and the innovation and all the work that's going on. Uh, the partners we've listed there are with our community partnership school, but many of you in this room are also providing a partnership for all of us. As we know, and it's unfortunate that we have to talk about this topic, but safety and security is of the utmost importance of our, our schools, for our parents, our employees. So we've put in many measures over the years, but we've added even more. You, if you have students in our school, you may have recently heard an announcement, we're going to football games. We're having even extra security and, and precautions. Why? Unfortunately, in this day, you have to. Uh, we do not have any specific threats. We're not anticipating any problems. It's just additional security measures. If you've gone to any schools, you know you have to be buzzed in. We have to check your ID. A lot of these things are now in statute because of the unfortunate situations that have happened in other places. We do not want to be a statistic, so we've added a lot of money and resources into security and things of that nature. Our financial ratings, uh, you probably are aware and have heard about that. Uh, we are very strong financially. Our fund balance this year will be over 8%. Uh, we're in a, ra uh, in a rating for the Fitch rating, which in the financial world is who does the metrics of whether you're performing well or not. So uh, there was a time when that was not one of our strengths, but I can tell you we have overcome many of those obstacles, and it is a strength for us now. As you can see, I just mentioned, this is what our fund balance is now. Uh, and why is that significant? We know that the state and the federal government has put a lot of resources into uh, education, but also county government because of COVID. We also know that those dollars will end in 24. So we all have to be mindful of what our resources are because those dollars that we've been experiencing will end very shortly. Also a facilities update. If you have driven anywhere in Manatee County, oh my, my. Uh, Mr. Cruz, we appreciate you coming because the growth is coming. Uh, and we see homes, we see businesses. So with that, we have to make sure that we're keeping up with that growth with the school system. But not only are we building new schools and adding wings to make sure we're addressing that, we want to make sure that our older schools have the same quality a brick and mortar that our new schools do. We want to make sure it doesn't matter where you live in this community, you feel proud of the facility that you're at. These are all of the projects that are on the book, some of which are schools that are 20 years old, some of which we're adding new wings or new buildings because of new schools being needed. As you will see, what we have posted right now is a new K-8 school that will be east of Lorraine, which means it will be further east than what we have for Mona Jane and Gullet and Lakewood Ranch. So that is the newest project that's online for this school year right now. In addition, uh, and everything I have listed here are all current projects that the board has approved. So our facilities department is quite busy right now, quite busy. Here's just a couple of renderings that you will see uh, with Freedom Elementary. Sometimes uh, if we can add a wing to a facility, it, it does a couple of things. It gives you additional capacity, but it's quicker to get it off the ground, and it's not as costly. So building a whole new facility, you have to rezone. There's a lot that goes into it. So we are uh, helping to deal with a lot of our growth by adding wings in some cases. Um, and these are just some examples of, of some of those that we're putting. SUG is a completely rebuild. That school was originally built in the 70s. 
If you go by it, it kind of looks like a 70s model. Even though we may have done some things to update it along the way, it's still an old building. We are duplicating the model we did for Dr. Mona Jane out east. We had enough property to build that site and while staying in the existing campus. And once it's complete in November, we will tear down the old and redo the traffic pattern in the parking lot. So SUG is almost completed right now. And then of course, Lakewood Ranch. Oh my, my. Uh, it, it's way over capacity. Uh, we're sitting today with about 2,400 students uh, that have shown up since Monday and uh, they still keep coming. So uh, our goal is to add the wing there, but not only when we add a wing, we remove the portables. So that is also the goal, is so that we have a brick and mortar facility and you're not having uh, portables also on a campus. Southeast High School, uh, that campus was renovated a number of years ago and uh, the science wing was an area that really had not been addressed at that time. So we're building a new science wing, tearing down the old, but also adding more capacity. So between the wings we're adding, uh, as well as the wing at Parish High, we're right now able to keep up with the growth in the capacity, but it's, it's an ongoing endeavor. We have to reevaluate it every year, uh, and the board is looking you know, at how we can ensure that we're keeping up with that. But they're really doing a great job uh, right now, uh, we're, we're, we're able to stay two, two steps ahead of the growth. One of the things that I would like uh, to show, and some of you have probably already seen this clip, is uh, our, our METV program has done an amazing job just kind of highlighting and putting together what, what we've done in the past and what we're doing right now. If you've not been in a classroom, I think you're going to be amazed at what our students are seeing and experiencing today. So take a look at this. I can tell you when I see that, it makes me very proud to know what our teachers, our schools are producing and what they're delivering each and every day. So if you haven't been in a classroom, you have an opportunity coming up, the Big Bank Theory, we're looking for volunteers, uh, but also uh, the work that we do with the chamber with the fourth grade. It really is with Pro Project Teach. It really is amazing if you haven't been in there to see how education has evolved. And we have to continually evolve. We cannot teach in the same way that we were taught 
that we experienced 10, 20, 30 years ago and expect that our students are going to be able to make it in today's workplace. So with that, we are working on a strategic plan. Some of you that may be attending uh, the retreat for the chamber, we will be seeking additional input because this really is the roadmap and we are seeking fee feedback from the community. What do you think is important that we should be doing, that we should be delivering to make sure that our students are prepared for this community and the state and the nation as well? So those are items that we're working on right now. We know it's essential that our students are walking into school ready to learn. And we know that our population has changed and there's many challenges. That if the language barrier is there coming in the door, what are we going to do to help them bridge the gap and get there quicker? Because we know it doesn't matter what the obstacle is. It's our responsibility to make sure that they're prepared and successful and able to matriculate. So that's what this whole segment is working on. We know that third grade reading levels are essential and we also know that that's not our strength in this county. This is an area that we do need to work more. We need to find better solutions, which is why we are partnering with other community members and resources to make sure that we're doing a better job here. So ready to learn and making sure that literacy is the top priority specifically of our elementary schools. But when they're in school and they're matriculating past that, are they ready for life? Are we making sure that we're giving them the skills that they need today? Are we providing enough different innovative opportunities that they have the electives, that they have the arts programs, that they can choose what, what is in their best interest, that their family feels is going to make them a productive citizen? And then ready to grow. We know it is essential that we have the staff and resources so that we can deliver the best student possible. We cannot do it without employees. So making sure we have competitive salaries, making sure that we have great working conditions, all of those things are essential and important to a successful school district. So we would like your input, we would like your feedback, and uh, Mr. Chapman, Mr. Chapman, can you give a hand? If you got any ideas, he's the guy. He's the guy looking for information. Some of you might not be aware, but this was the first graduating class of Parish Community High School. But I want to take you back to when they entered the school. This year's graduates, when they were in 10th grade, and that, so when we opened, it was 9th and 10th graders. So the first group that walked in was the year of 1920. What happened in 1920? What? Oh, yeah. 1920 school year. I, I, I'm in the school terms. But in 2020, spring, COVID hit. So they walked in the door the year of the pandemic. Now they didn't know when they walked in, but they are the first group that graduated under those conditions. So two of their years were very disruptive, very unusual, non-traditional. So I'm gonna give you their perspective of the graduating class. Through these four years in high school, Everyone in our class has been the new kid. We all found ways to work together. We found ways to start things from scratch, and we learned how to work together and make it through changes in our plans. We began to make this school into something that younger kids would look forward to, and people who graduate here would remember for years after they leave. We definitely want to set the standards high and keep traditions going so that the next couple uh, classes that are graduating can, you know, have something to look back on. Without knowledge, without reviews, and without proof, we chose this road. We took a chance on a family we knew nothing about. We took a chance on a new campus, new programs, new mentors, and of course, new friends. It was a shiny new place awaiting guests, and while it wasn't what we were used to, we wanted to be the first. Go, 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 go. 
like I felt like a sense of family, a sense of friendship, like I felt whole as a person. I felt like I had a meaning there. We once dreamed of becoming astronauts and princesses, then presidents and rock stars. Now we look back on this chapter and we find ourselves in the midst of promise and opportunity. This road we chose three years ago has made all the difference. And while we thank our families, teachers, administration, and community, the epicenter of this change has always been us. We were their hope for the future. We are the image of their hard work paying off, and we will be the remembered. Congrats, class of 2022, we did it. <laughs>
but uh, we definitely still have some shortage of drivers as well. Any other great questions? This, wow, see we've said everything, that's fabulous. Thank you very much. We're going we're gonna to get you out of here early today. Thank you all so very much for attending. Um, thank you to our, our headliner sponsors once again, FPNL, the Mosaic Company, and the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manatee. Thank you to METV, Charles Clapsaddle and his amazing team. Coming up in September, uh, we will be at the Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club. Uh, and we will be hearing from Rick Piccolo, President and CEO at the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. We look forward to seeing you all there. A few additional events tomorrow night. Pretty, I'm pretty sure it's a sold out event. Uh, Small Business of the Year, it's a signature event of ours at the Bradenton Area Convention Center um, starting at four o'clock. So I think a lot of you will be there. So I look forward to seeing you then. For any uh, young professionals in the room, we have a coffee with the chair coming up on the 23rd. Uh, State Representative Will Robinson will also be there, uh, so it should be a, a, a great um, morning. And then, and I, I brought two, let me grab these. On your table, you have two postcards. Uh, information on two of our upcoming events. The first one is the 30th Annual um, Business and Education Partnership Awards Breakfast. That is coming up in October. Uh, it's, a, it's an excellent breakfast. It's a, it's a feel-good breakfast. It's going to take place at, Man at the Manatee Technical College. And um, we would love, registration's already open. We'd love for you to register. And we're in need of sponsors, too. So if anybody's interested, you know how to find us. And then Big Bank is back. Uh, another flyer as well. Uh, for those of you not too familiar with Big Bank, it's a fin financial literacy program we do with our high school seniors. We have not been in the schools since 2019, um, so we are really excited. And we are already having volunteers sign up. Um, it's been excellent, but I need sponsors. I need more sponsors. I need to feed my volunteers. So if you're interested in being a lunch sponsor, let us know. Um, and through this process, there are 13 stations, all of these students, will um, we'll stop at. It's an opportunity for them to, you know, be an adult. Um, but each of those sponsor, each of our stations will be sponsored as well. So if that's something that your business might be interested in, please let me know. And with that, thank you again so very much for being here. You all have a great afternoon. We'll see you in September. No, we'll see you tomorrow.